Now we are going to talk about an important painting of Chen Chengbo's Shanghai period. The work was shown at China's first national art exhibition. It is called Dye House in the Afternoon. This painting is part of the collection of the Taipei Fine Arts Museum. It's a very dramatic work. Why is that? Because from records of Chen Chengbo's early paintings, as well as records in books, we know that Chen was active in Shanghai during the 1930s. This painting had usually been called Suzhou 1932. After the museum acquired the painting, the work was the subject of a major restoration and repair project. This project took what had been unclear areas of varnish or areas that had become dirty and cleaned them up. What had looked like the date 32 on the canvas was really 29, and later research found that it likely was done in 1929. In April that year, the work was put on display in China. It was for China's first national art expo. Chen entered three paintings in this expo. Two of these works still survive, and this is one of them. This is why it's such an important work. In the painting album made that year, the work was entitled Dye House in the Afternoon. Everyone thought he painted the work in Suzhou, where there are many silk dyers. And no one doubted this, at least until a few years ago, when Academia Sinica and the Chen Chengbo Foundation came out with a plan to tag Chen's paintings to coordinates on Google Maps. With the internet being what it is today, the museum was able to find, from records at Duke University in the United States, that Sidney David Gamble, who lived from 1890 to 1968, and was an American sociologist who graduated from Princeton, had also been in China around the same period of time. Around roughly the same time Chen Chengbo was in China, Gamble had done four survey trips to the same area, and he took some pictures there. Many pictures, actually. One set of pictures that has been recently discovered is also in the possession of Duke University. It shows the scene in the painting from an angle very close by. But on the photograph, the name of the city Hangzhou is written instead. The work suddenly went from being seen as a painting of Suzhou in 1932 to a painting of Hangzhou in 1929. Why did the artist choose this view near this silk shop? Because it has such a beautiful arch bridge, and there are many old streets and many old buildings. This point of view is very beautiful, and when we compare Gamble's photographs to the scenery that Chen Chengbo paints here, we can see that it is very, very colorful. There are many sheets of silk hanging down from above the dye works. They hang down from the horizon with their reflection inverted in the small canal below. The whole feeling is one of sparkling, full of rich, diverse colors. Chen has also added many of the people he liked to paint, showing them loving one another and walking down the road, or crowding together on the bridge and watching the excitement. Chen also liked to paint more modern elements. For example, there are electric poles and wires. In any of his paintings, we can see many curves, or else we can see arcs and lines. There are lines that can break the rigid vertical facade, and some arcs that provide a sense of rhythm. Those vertical silks, reflected there on the water, and the horizontal display of various colors, are a bit like the way an impressionist painter would paint reflections on the water, a point that provides interest to this painting. More interestingly, and importantly in China, in addition to being a sort of Western painter teaching Western perspectives, Chen also learned something from Chinese ink painting techniques. For example, the brushwork of the Yuan Dynasty master Ni Zan. The technique Chen uses for the trees on the right side of the painting reflects the brushwork of Ni Zan, one of the great four masters of the Yuan Dynasty. The leaves, branches, and trunks on these trees look much like Yuan Dynasty ink painting. Chen's blending of the Chinese and the Western is rich and interesting.